Well, just last week, uh, Israel bombed the Greek Orthodox Church in Al Zaytun neighborhood in Gaza, which is the oldest church in the city, where hundreds of displaced civilians were taking shelves, killing about 20 Palestinians. Now, Israel bars Palestinian Christians from visiting Jerusalem and Bethlehem at Christmas and other holidays, especially those hailing from Gaza, where about 1,000 Palestinian Christians uh, live, mostly uh, Greek Orthodox. Church leaders in Jerusalem face the daily, uh, daily abuses and harassments, intimidations and threats by Israeli settlers. Those include uh, acts of vandalism, arson, discretion of church property. Also the Christian uh, community uh, in Jerusalem facing uh, the daily threat of forced acquisitions by Israeli uh, settlers and the appropriation of church property by uh, the Israeli state. Israel has long suppressed uh, uh, Jewish peace activists in Israel, including anti-war activists uh, uh, who oppose its war current war uh, in Gaza. And it continues to suppress um, anti-Zionist uh, Jewish voices who oppose its occupation and apartheid system in the West Bank. Israel is not bombing uh, Gaza to wipe out Hamas. Uh, it is conducting a collective punishment against uh, Palestinian civilians in Gaza. So far, Israel has killed over 6,000 Palestinians in Gaza, including 2,360 children. Israel admitted that it has killed only six Hamas members or leaders so far. So in other words, Israel Israel's aims in Gaza is to kill as many Palestinians as possible. And there's one word for it, genocide or ethnic cleansing. Now, in 2007, Israel imposed a total siege on Gaza by land, air and sea to punish Palestinians for electing Hamas in a democratic election. For nearly two decades, 2.4 Palestinians in Gaza, most of them uh, refugees, have been caged in a blockade with no way in or out. It is Gaza is described as the world's uh, largest uh, open-air prison. Now, Hamas was born in 1987 during the First Intifada, but Israel's brutal violence against Gaza started decades before that. Let me give you some uh, historical context. In 1948, at Israel's founding, about uh, 750,000 Palestinians were forced to flee their homes and become lifetime refugees. Nearly 250,000 of those uprooted flooded into Gaza, tripling the population overnight and rendering Gaza a closer refugee camp squashed, squashed between desert and sea. Now, providing shelter to displaced Palestinians from over 250 raised Palestinian villages and towns, Gaza became a Noah's Ark for Palestine after the Nakba. Even when Palestinians in Gaza embraced non-violent resistance, like strikes, demonstrations, and so on, they were brutally uh, suppressed and crushed by Israel. This happened during the First Intifada, which was a popular uprising um, that broke out in the Jabalia refugee camp in, Gaza, camp in Gaza in 1987. It happened again during the Second Intifada in 2000. Both uprising, uprisings were uh, brutally crushed by Israel. Over 5,000 uh, Palestinians were killed by Israel during uh, the first and second intifada. It happened again in uh, 2018 when Gaza refugees uh, staged a peaceful great march of return to commemorate the anniversary of the Nakba. Israel responded by killing hundreds of Palestinians in the span of six weeks, including children, journalists, and women. A UN report later uh, concluded that Israel, uh, Israeli soldiers and leaders committed war crimes and crimes against humanity uh, in Gaza and intentionally used uh, live ammunition against uh, civilians. In short, Israel's unbridled brutality in Gaza has produced a generation of Palestinians who have lost faith in nonviolent resistance, which makes the latest explosion violence uh, as tragic as it was inevitable. Uh, the young Palestinian men who uh, stormed into Israel on October uh, 7 were therefore um, acting out of desperation, seeing no out of the blockade and the inhumanity of pressure. The article clearly says that Israel is not an apartheid state. In fact, it, it's much worse. And it's not me saying that. In, in, 19, in 2004, uh, during the second intifada, uh, Ronnie um, uh, Kasrils, a leading member of the African National Congress uh, during the apartheid era in South Africa, uh, visited the occupied Palestinian territories to assess the impact of occupation on the uh, on Palestinians. And he observed, I quote, 
This is much worse than apartheid. The Israeli measures the brutality make apartheid look like a picnic. Now, Castries was not alone. Even some of Israel's old friends in Washington would concede to this grim reality. Nearly two decades ago, uh, former U.S. President Jimmy Carter published a book titled Palestine Peace, Not Apartheid, in which he warned that Israel's apartheid system in the West Bank was worse than that of uh, South Africa. In 2021, uh, uh, Human Rights Watch became the latest uh, uh, international organization to charge Israel with imposing a criminal apartheid system in, in the West Bank. Tamir Pardo, a former uh, Mossad chief, said recently that Israel is enforcing an apartheid system in the West Bank. In fact, three former Israeli uh, prime ministers, including Ehud Barak, Barak and uh, Yitzhak Rabin, agree with him. Even Israel's own founders, like uh, David Ben-Gurion, uh, could foresee uh, the perils of apartheid in Israel. In the aftermath of, uh, uh, of the 1967 war, David Ben-Gurion warned that Israel's occupation of the West Bank would result in an apartheid system. Now, it was a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy. The brutal realities of Israeli occupation and settlements in the West Bank resulted in a de facto apartheid system where a minority of Jewish settlers rules over a majority, an entire Palestinian population through a restless combination of, of military rule and ethnic segregation. Today, there are over one a half a million uh, Jewish settlers in the West Bank living in over 140 uh, Jewish settlements in addition to 140 illegal settlements that were built without a government approval and are considered illegal even under Israeli law. In East Jerusalem, about over 300,000 Jewish settlers uh, live in uh, 13 illegal settlements that were built uh, over uh, stolen Palestinian lands and, house and private houses uh, taken from Palestinians by force. This puts a uh, settler population over 700,000, uh, which represents 12% of the uh, of Jews living in Israel today. Meanwhile, some 3.5 uh, Palestinians lived in, live in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, mostly in segregated cantons behind Israel's apartheid wall, so-called, and newly constructed apartheid road, and in towns and cities uh, penned between Jewish settlement blocks and behind a network of segregated word, uh, roads, uh, security barriers, and military installations. Uh, the apartheid wall, which run, uh, runs deep into Palestinian lands, displacing thousands of Palestinian communities and Palestinian towns and villages from one another, has created a two-tier system which provides full constitutional rights and privileges to Israeli settlers who live there while depriving Palestinians of basic human rights. Now, for Palestinians who live uh, under apartheid, uh, ap apartheid signals not only uh, ethnic segregation, but the inhumanity of life under occupation. The beatings, shootings, killings, assassinations, lynchings, curfews, military checkpoints, house demolitions, forced evictions and uh, deportations, forced disappearances and uprooting of trees, mass arrests, extended imprisonments and detentions without trial. Even as we speak, Israeli um, National Security uh, Minister uh, Itamar ben Gvir has posted a video that shows him handing out assault weapons to Israeli Jewish settlers with the aim of killing Palestinians and sowing terror among the Palestinian population in the West Bank and Jerusalem and even inside Israel. What I'm saying is that violence will continue to hunt Israelis and Palestinians for years unless the root causes of the conflict are dismantled by Israel. Apartheid and occupation ended and the siege on Gaza lifted.